friend. Thank you yeah. all for being here with us. Um, like I said, you know, we've been starting started this new initiative this uh, this semester, and uh, you know, we're we're really glad that you guys were able to come out and take some time to present to us and kind of talk to us, tell us a little bit about Savello and what kind of opportunities you guys are offering. So I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, definitely. Kim's going to take us. Yeah. So thank you for having us. Um, we're very excited to be here. So recently we started an internal veterans group at Cervello where we're trying to come up with ideas of how we support veterans, whether it's through the hiring process or volunteerism. And um, we each joined due to a certain reason because veterans in our life. And um, we were going to kind of share with you that and then go over, you know, introductions just in front of uh, okay. So I'm Kim Albello. I'm a manager at Cervello. I've been with Cervello seven years now, and for three of those years, I actually worked remotely. And the reason being is because later in life, my husband had a um, desire to do a career change from the business world uh, to the Coast Guard. So he enlisted in the Coast Guard and went through a school boot camp, all that and got stationed um, in Cape Disappointment. So I actually thought when what he called that? me, yeah. 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 I thought when he called me to tell me where he got stationed that it was a joke, so I laughed and then I cried. Um, but I, it actually is a real place in the Pacific Northwest and I actually brought a little picture of it for you guys to see. Um, so here, see them kind of going off on the surf. So it's, it's here, and they do they do training for rough waters and like that. But oh, wow. I brought this because I mean this means a lot to me. I of course I was nervous moving out to the Pacific Northwest, not knowing anyone. But um, him being in the Coast Guard was one of the best experiences of my life. I think um, I met some of the best people, and um, it really gave me a newfound respect for veterans and their families and, and the sacrifices you guys make. So that's why I am here and part of the veterans group at Cervello. So. <laughs> Do you want to, will you tell them also about the boat? Uh, I think this is so Oh, cool. yeah. So it's, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like some of the Coast Guard boats, but this one's designed to, to flip over if it if it goes oh, underwater. Cool. So it flips yeah. itself back <laughs> over within 30 seconds. So yeah. they're like, <laughs> yeah. So they're strapped to the part of something. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So I'm John Anderson. I'm a senior director at, at Cervello. I've been there for nine years now. I've seen the company grow from about eight people to, you know, to just under 200 or so. And then we were acquired earlier this year by AT Carney, a global management consulting firm. Um, so yeah, so I'm in our analytics and information management practice, so I'll um, design, develop, architect, and data management and analytics um, uh, implementations for clients. Um, and yeah, like Kim said, we're, the four of us aren't actually veterans, but we have, you know, um, uh, you know it's close to, it's close to our hearts around why we want to support veterans. So I, I was so mad. I, I forgot my my picture at home, but I have that on the uh, on my phone. I'll pass it around. But um, essentially, my my father's cousin, um, John Rich, was was killed in Vietnam as a, a Marine, and um, so we so he, he named me after after him, and um, you know I'm kind of carrying that through my. I have three kids. Uh, my daughter Chloe, and then my son Lucas. His middle name is John, and my second son, his middle name is Alan. So. Yeah, uh, that's that's John. The resemblance. <laughs> I don't think there's more of that. That's the um yeah, that's the uh the, the wall in DC, yeah. That's a rubbing of the of his name there. Uh, you want to pass oh yeah, of course you're good. So, <laughs> <laughs> we brought stuff. <laughs> we did, well, like, like we were, well, this we're is, trying to make it <laughs> my mom, this stays at my mom's house, so I had her. Um, my name's Michael, I've been with that I went to, kind of graduated, and Exactly what I wanted to do, um, but because I major in economics and government, I thought I'd go try finance. Uh, while in finance, I thought it was a little bit more competitive and independent than of an environment that I was looking for. 
Uh, I had a friend actually from college who worked at Cervelo and kept telling me to come check it out. And I was like, what is Cervelo? Sounds like it's, a bike, it's like a bike company, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I went, uh, interviewed, and I absolutely... That's why I'm still with the company. Um, I had actually kind of... Was paratrooper in um, World War II, so this, he used to keep this um, <clears throat> over his, like in the, the living room where we hang out with him. So I brought this just to show you guys, and then also um, here I have the actual purple heart. Wow. So that's why I joined. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. That's so cool. Um, he was shot while he was in Korea, um, but he, growing up, he didn't really like to talk about it much, um, so we're now just getting to go through his, like, diaries and letters he used to write my grandma, mm -hmm. but he used to hide all that stuff in the house, and, like, as a kid, I mean, I feel like I would always pester him with questions you later learn aren't appropriate, but, um, so we were, my grandpa and I were really close, but he just... It's one of the things he didn't talk about too frequently with us, so it's kind of cool now with my mom reading the letters and kind of going back through everything. But, uh, yeah. uh, my name is Pat Desmond. I am a senior consultant at Cervelo. I work in the same practice as Michael. Uh, we're in the uh, I've been with the company about two and a half years now. I worked in private wealth management before, uh, wanted a career change as well, it just wasn't a lot of settings similar to this, but I would always be the youngest person in the room talking about, you know, these people's investments, and they'd be like, they don't want me anything about my investments. So after a couple of years of that, I got tired of it. reason that um, I wanted to join our veterans group was because my father was a of a, a, a LERP team. Uh, veterans Employment Training Services uh, for the federal government for a long time. So he was always working to help veterans get jobs, so I just kind of naturally saw what he was doing and would just help. All right, where is I have? I brought from one of the times he was wounded, this was a lighter they gave him. 173rd Airborne Brigade. That was, I think, in place of the third Purple Heart. So he on that one. More, no more for him. Are they? I'm just going to go to That's what they used to give out in place of challenge coins. Yeah. I know that we kind of uh, gave really our little that. spiel. That's, yeah, that's awesome. of course. Really cool. Something, yeah. Do you guys want to kind of give your name or what, what you go to near Northeastern for or why you're at Northeastern your and then your brand? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So I'm Chris Blunt. I am in my last semester here at Northeastern in, in political science. Uh, I am working part time here in, in CAVS, helping coordinate these these. That's um, I served in the Marine Corps six years. I did four years active, two years in the reserves. It was 
in um, supply chain management basically so I did um, uh, supply chain management for aircraft parts and I was stationed in Jacksonville North Carolina uh, Afghanistan 2011 went to Bahrain in 2012 more of a vacation <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah um, recently I did a co-op with Johnson & Johnson and with their supply chain um, side on the consumer the consumer space um, I started to learn a lot more about you know different data analytics tools and things like that um, got to get familiar with Alteryx which is oh, like yeah. a <laughs> crazy tool and it's kind of transforming the big data space I think well, that and you know Azure of course mm -hmm. but uh, yeah but that's my story that's so awesome. thank you thank you thank you Thank you guys for being here. My name is Kenny Paul. Um, I'm currently a finance and accounting um, major here, graduating also. Um, and um, I was in the Navy. I served four years on active duty, two years in the reserves. I served in the service fleet and in uh, naval aviation, both to Iraq, Somalia. And um, currently, my last lesson, I'm looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> what, what ships were you? Uh, so I was on the cruiser, here from Cape St. George, maybe they matched up with 51, but it was just a fighter squadron for Spronix on um, there now, uh, based out of Bloomer, California. I'm not sure which carrier would be there in now, but when I was there, it was CAC-1 hmm. of um, Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I didn't mention, actually, my grandfather was served in the Navy in World War II on a, oh. on a carrier as a radio man. Wow. Yeah. World War II carriers. <laughs> My name is Renee. Um, so Marine Corps. Um, and uh, did administration uh, at the Marine Corps. So that's four years in uh, Carolina, three years in San Diego. All that was uh, Myanmar. Myanmar. Call it Marine Corps Paradise. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty much the best that you can get stationed at. And um, uh, got out. Uh, interesting story. I actually, actually wanted to be a military chaplain, uh, so I got out, did a master's in uh, divinity. Um, ended up changing my route. Uh, wanted to do more administration, which is what I currently do now, more resource management. But, and uh, wanted to do learn more about nonprofit management and things like that, legal aspects of it. And so. One, so I came over here to do a master of nonprofit management. Way through, no, not really. More <laughs> in the beginning of the time. So I can say master is a short program. So um, that'll be closer halfway through. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Okay. So we already went through introduction. So then we'll just go through about Cervello, what we do, and things like that. Um, we're made up of three practices, so we'll give an overview of each of those so you guys get an idea of what each practice does. We'll talk about opportunities outside of our current client engagements, so opportunities there, and then why join our team and, and why we like working at Cervello. And then Q&A, but I think since it's a small group, you can just kind of keep it interactive, and you guys can ask throughout if that's good. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... Who is Cervello? So we are a business analytics and data management consulting firm that specializes in cloud-based technologies. And I, I know, at least when I tell my family and friends that I do consulting, they, they have no idea what I do. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, helping companies improve, uh, you know, their business through a variety of different approaches. So there is management consulting. So that's kind of going in, advising the operational process and strategic processes. And then there's technical consulting, which is what we do. So we'll go in, we'll advise companies, um, build out different technical solutions, um, and, and as well as manage them and try to get their, their teams up to speed. Now, we have, um, I think we mentioned this to a couple of you, that our headquarters are in the Seaport in Boston, so two Seaport Lane. It's in the, across from the Seaport Hotel. Uh, and then we also have offices in Dallas, London, New York, uh, India and Russia. Well, not offices. We do development in Russia. Um, but yeah, we've, we've definitely grown a lot over the last year. Um, we started out pretty small and we've done pretty well this year. So expanding um, globally, as you can see. 
any questions on so far? I think Pat, you're going to take uh, the next one, which is why yes. people need us. <laughs> question about that. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys service uh, like uh, nonprofits? As that has been a. Uh, yeah, I think we don't. We're not set up to do like pro bono work per se, but right. but but we do yeah. cross industries. You know, this pretty much every industry and every type of organization. University of mm -hmm. Education, yeah. So, uh, why is there a need for the service that Cervelo provides? Um, there's a lot of changes going on right now in the industry, and so um, a couple of them, a lot of data is held, you know, kind of like this <laughs> right now, <laughs> and so it's not necessarily the the best way of, of doing things. There's more efficient, more powerful, uh, kind of better ways where you can leverage that data to improve your processes, and that's done in, in the cloud using systems that are just, they're just backed by a lot more infrastructure and, and power compared to kind of something like this down in the, the basement of the, um, and so what I'm doing specifically, or at least the service that my team provides is sort of related to legacy processes that can be kind of slow and painful just picture everything that goes into running a company. Say you have a sales system, you have salespeople generating money, you have defense systems, all sorts of people enter. Up. And eventually you want it to flow into a nice, final, clean sort of financial statement. But to do that is a very difficult process, and we sort of try to simplify it. And so far from what I've seen, we do a very good job. So, uh, right now we're structured. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk Sorry. to this one. That's all right. No, <laughs> no, no worries. So, um, so, yeah, like we've kind of talked about, there are, there are three practice areas that, that we call them as we've break, broken them down. So, the enterprise performance solutions, um, uh, analytics and information management, and then you know what we call the next practice, kind of an in, internal term, but it's more like CRM. Uh, Customer relationship management. Think of sales and customer service type systems. Those things. So um, the EPS practice on the left, um, and, and they're all kind of underpinned by this idea of cloud technologies and modern data architectures and, and things. But really, data is kind of the lifeblood and the common thread. That you know, how do you leverage your data, whether it's through planning or through analytics or or, or customer outreach or so? How do you leverage your data in the best way? So the EPS um, practice focuses more on the on kind of the the, the office of the CFO and, and planning, budgeting, consolidations, those kinds of processes and, and plannings and systems. Um, the analytics and information management is is a lot around the um, kind of data management infrastructure and moving data, organizing data, surfacing data for analytics and for for reporting for advanced analytics or so. Um, and then the next practice is focused more. Um, around like that that CRM customer outreach sales type data set and the Salesforce platform or you know Salesforce.com is a huge huge player in, in the cloud so that's a big for focus of that practice as well as do a lot of custom application development so think coding and, and just creating custom applications to, and interfaces to you know to interact with the data um, so like we've kind of talked about there's um, Many challenges that the company are faced with in terms of leveraging this data in the best way, and it's not isolated to just any particular type of company: small companies, large companies, Fortune 100 companies. Everyone has kind of issues in different at different scale, uh, but a lot of common themes. And so, you know, how do you connect data? How do you connect sales and expenses to get a true view of profitability? Or how do you, you know, how do you efficiently close your books on a monthly basis um, in order to you know, um, to keep the operations moving. How do you, how do you monetize data? Pro how do you take your data and, and sell it to your customers or your client base? How do you? And so that's kind of a lot of kind of samples of, of what what we do and how we're broken down in the three practice areas. There you go. So 
So this slide is kind of an overview of uh, personality traits and, and interests that we sort of look for um, as culture fits with us at Cervello. And um, sort of some background, like John was saying, that the three practices are, are kind of a little bit different um, in terms of, there's definitely overlap as well, I can preface it with that. But in general, where John mentioned we're dealing with uh, like CFO type stuff in our practice, a lot of us have finance, econ, accounting backgrounds, things like that. Um, Excel, obviously a big thing, but all across the board. Um, for John's practice, you would probably want someone a little bit more knowledgeable about the whole sort of, you want someone with a lot more in-depth like data management and analytics knowledge than you might necessarily need for someone in our So coding, Python, script writing, things like that. Um, and for the next practice, which deals primarily with Salesforce, there, you know, a lot of people have custom Salesforce development experience, CRM experience, things like that. But across all of our practices, you're you're going to be client facing. You know, we're, we're looking for team players. Like we all have to kind of help each other out. Like there's been times certainly Kim has helped me out. And has to lend a hand. We, I sort of look at it as like a family. I spend more time with I'm with Kim and Michael over the last couple of years than I have with my fiance or anyone else. Um, and just some sort of the usual stuff like that, you know, sounds kind of quick, quick thinking ability by which obviously you guys. Um, that's sort of in general kind of who works for us, personality type. Yeah, and we kind of, in that gray box in the middle, we kind of put what are typical like majors or what studies that we lead to, but mm -hmm. it's definitely not a hard and fast rule for sure because, you know, we have philosophy majors, the English majors, um, you know, I um, did electrical engineering, it didn't really work with data going to schools, but, uh, you know, so it's just kind of how, kind of that next line of what are your, what are your interests or tendencies as to, you know, how, where do you think you might, might fit? Um, so I like this slide a lot because it just shows um, lots of the cloud uh, applications that we work with. So you can kind of see, briefly talked about um, our practices. You can see like Anaplan is a, on the top left. That's a software that I use um, along with Kim and Pat. And all the way down, I know you mentioned um, Azure earlier and um, Alteryx. Yeah, Alteryx. So you can see so. We have roughly 175 consultants right now. Um, there are people who touch on, like, there we can get if some if we're working with a client, they're like, hey, we're looking to only use um, Amazon Redshift. Well, we have at least a few people that know it, are certified in it. Um, but I like to show it when we're at something like this because it shows the endless learning opportunities. So I came in, um, I'm learning Anaplan right now. And if I want, I can start to learn another um, implementation tool or cloud-based technology. Um, obviously, I, my clients are on Anaplan, so I need to be well-versed, and that's where my primary focus. But at the moment, um, Tableau and Power BI are two things I want to start to learn because they can integrate with Anaplan, so it'll just be able to help me at clients. Um, yeah, and, then, and the main part is I, I just like to show this because you can see there's so much out there and then so much Cervello can offer. And, and I think um, another key point of this slide is that, um, you know, we're a technical consulting firm, um, but but it's really difficult to just do one technology because technology changes so much and so often. So we have to strike that balance of being an expert um, in a technology well enough to be able to implement it, but also be able to kind of keep, keep on top of industry trends and where, where things are shifting. We've certainly had to shift technology over the past you know, eight or nine years. So it's it's kind of it's a I, you know a lot of people like that challenge of um, you know kind of being able to and that's what we think talk about an innovative thinker or, or shifting or being able to shift thinking you know that learning possibilities are always 
always there. So we always have to keep on on the leading edge of the industry. Sure. Um, back to like a, your to know any of those things. Generally, not not um, not as a not as a rule. I think um, depends on maybe the position we might be looking at. But it's, I'd say it's more rare that we're looking for a specialist in a given technology than it's more often that we're looking for a generalist or, okay, what are your past experiences? Or like we put in the last slide, what are your tendencies to, you know, I think of, uh, of like Mark Garasino, like when he joined Cervello, he, um, he didn't have any of this experience, but he had created like a fantasy football, you know, algorithm model offline. And we're like, oh, that guy likes to work with data. So, I think it's, <laughs> um, yeah, so. So it's kind of like, are you a structure thinker? Are you, you know, and there's a lot of soft skills and client facing skills that are very, very valuable, a lot of different roles within a project as well. So as a rule, as a general rule, I think we look, try to look for more, what's the aptitude there? What if I show that the person of personality, so a lot of people don't um, what else would you add to that, like an ideal candidate? And I'm sure it depends on the, the positions. Mm -hmm. um, but what would you say would be an ideal candidate? Personality and skills. Yeah, I think, and um, maybe to highlight some of the things that Pat had said around like being a team player, being able to work within a group. Because, um, you know, if we had a choice between a, a, someone who is a deep specialist and technology the world-renowned specialist in a given technology but you couldn't stand the guy and he pissed everyone off that he talked to versus someone who was pretty good in that technology but could really help client feel at ease we would probably choose the latter guy so i think client you know team um team teamwork and working with the group um is, is a big soft skill and then yeah the ability to to think analytically um and and to um, yeah, you know, there are different roles on the project. Project project manager might be is definitely a role on on our implementations, but so they might not have to know the technologies inside now, but they still have to be able to think. Okay, um, you know, we're we're implementing these technologies for a given business goal. Um, are any ac activities on any given day that my team is working on? Are these kind of working towards that? Are these can help support that. So. Um, I don't know if that helps. It does help. Can I can I add yeah. one thing briefly to the first part? So just as I, I didn't have any I didn't have any of this started and the way that I started at Cervello, I was talking to one of my friends. I was and oh I have this spreadsheet that I work with, it's crazy, it's like abs, it does all this stuff, it's nuts, it's like I have to get up and go take a walk when it's running, go get lunch, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I just can't, like, something happened today. And, well, it was just kind of complaining. And the co-founder was like, yeah, we fixed that. And I was like, okay. so, <laughs> and so I was like, maybe, you know, this that was sort of like the little spark that I was like, okay, maybe this is something that stuff. So that's just kind of how I got involved with it. I had none of That's the heartbeat of the company. So, so uh, know how to deal with these things. Is, is, that, is that right? Yeah, I'd say it's a yeah, it's um, but certainly what the clients think they pay for, right. and then I say think they pay for because they also pay for, you know, they pay for ease of mind. So they have a, they have an issue and they think it's a technical issue, and so they want to buy a technology, and then we go in and we we say okay, here's how to use the technology, but also you have to. Shift your thinking a little bit. You have to do your organization a little bit differently. So um, we generally, and I'm not sure if we have a slide on it, but we generally think of the kind of three areas, people, process, and technology. that are kind of the heartbeat. So technology being a core core principle, but the other two legs of the stool are, are people, dealing with people and dealing with processes. Um, so John said a few minutes, a couple of extra minutes ago, but um, we were acquired back in January by ATK. Um, talks unofficially began, I think, somewhere around October, a little bit before. 
Um, what's important to know, and Kim kind of mentioned too, is that before ATK just did primarily change management consulting, um, and then we were doing more of the data analytics that we've been talking about. So when ATK would go on a pitch, they could go, you know, talk about change management, the structure, reorg, that kind of conversation, and they say for your data analytics, you know, we recommend you go with the third party that hire hire another consulting firm. They'll come in, you know, you need to be on the cloud, pick one of these softwares, have someone come in and, and do that for you. As part. <clears throat> what they can do now is say, we actually have a whole team dedicated just to taking whatever you were on, you know, these servers, basement, hidden warehouses, <laughs> putting everything on the cloud. They work with all these technologies. Why don't you go sit with them? They'll find actually the best tool for you. So because we're not, you know, obviously some of the companies will appreciate when we sell their product. That's not what we're doing. As a company, we want the best fit with the client. Um, so because of that, we're still our umbrella organization, which is kind of why the merge or the acquisition has gone at least really well for us, because there was no um, no layoffs, nothing like that. Uh, they made a huge deal about how it was like that's not at all what the acquisition was for, because it's so separate and different that we're able to come together and work as a team. Um, so for me personally, uh, I haven't seen much of a change in my day to day. I have got the opportunity to present to a couple partners at ATK. So to give you kind of an idea, ATK is a pretty big global consulting firm, uh, offices like everywhere. They have somewhere around 3,200 consultants and then somewhere around 350 partners. Um, the both partners, so at different times I've sat down and given these guys presentations and they're, you know, have their masters in XYZ and they couldn't have been nicer during my presentation, really engaged, asked great questions, and never once did I feel like nervous or like, oh my gosh, this guy's such a big deal. He's like, <laughs> so not like that at all. It's been great, um, really collaborative. So from my stance, I'm, I've been happy and, and see it as a good opportunity to be able to continue our relationship. You guys represent both ATK and so is it because as if there's two, mm -hmm. but so is this because of the transition? Yes. Aspect? So to because um, of some of their history, they haven't had an acquisition in a while, quite a while actually. Um, they did. They were private. They uh, they were acquired. It didn't go well, and they bought the company back. I think it had been somewhere around 18 years or 15 years mm -hmm. since all that. Uh, with the acquisition, they had this whole plan that they talked about with our founders, and that's why I kind of said it took from October to January to make this long-term plan of how the merge can be the best way to make the merge successful, and that's for things to go slowly. So we actually have like two partners from ATK, one that's pretty much just dedicated to helping us, but making sure, because as I said, their size was around 3,200 consultants and 350 partners, that they don't throw too many things at us on day one kind of funneling the opportunities. So, and as Ken kind of said, we're growing a lot. As we grow, then we can kind of help more of them at a time. But if all of them were like, we need help with this client, obviously we would drown <laughs> and it wouldn't go well. So we are we are one company, but we're part of, as I'm saying, the kind of an umbrella organization. We're still under them, but it's like this slow merge to make sure everything goes smoothly. Yeah, and since we kind of have different um, different offerings, like client offerings, you know, we, we do our own rec recruiting and hiring and, and those kinds of things as well at least for for the foreseeable future mm -hmm. you know does that does that impact how you engage with clients for example as far as um so i understand you said earlier that so now they probably funnel some business to you because you have the services but um do you some do you have to work with them let's say on certain, certain clients on site at times Yep. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So I think that was one of the reasons for the, for the acquisition and for the, um, and one of the things that's gone well in the past year is it's, it's almost like they're another, they're another distribution arm of our, they outsource, you know, finding business for us. So they'll, they'll bring us under their existing accounts and, um, you know, um, probably not widespread yet, as Michael said, they're trying to work the transition slow, but there's definitely been where they bring bring some some of our folks on and have to work with their clients and figure out how to help them transition their services. But um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a huge benefit. Um, At Carney is an 80 year old 
company, very well established, and um, and they're also experts in the supply chain um, and logistics and, and everything. So yeah, it just kind of extends that our our um, offerings extend their services. I, I had never. Oh, sorry. Well, I was going to say, two weeks ago, we actually brought them into one of our um, engagements because of their supply chain and logistics knowledge. So we're, we're leveraging their industry experience and um, the you know planning experience as well to help us um, some of our projects as well. No, I was going to just talk. Okay. Like you said too, and what was Kim, Kim was just saying too, is on a pitch I was on a couple of weeks ago, we're actually offering their services. So we kind of had this relationship started, where and we were now able to say, you know, the company said, well, we're also looking for change management consulting. And, well, that's actually perfect. That's <laughs> something we can also talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, they're, they just with their size, we, we're going to get with them, but we're also helping them. All right, so we can, we're starting to go into the practices now. So I can go into the enterprise management solution or yeah, management solutions practice. So it's just a quick time check. It's quarter of four. Oh, it we, is. Yeah, okay. we we, are we um we're stopping. We have a hard stop at four. I know that's where we're scheduled to. So we're we're open. I don't know if these guys have other. It's been like four fifteen. Okay. All right. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the practice myself, Michael, and Pat are in. Um, sorry. Um, so as John mentioned, so we normally focus around the Office of Finance. So we do a lot of financial planning analysis, implementations. Um, we have done some supply chain ones as well, which I find super interesting. More interesting than finance stuff. Um, but we also do this across multiple um, industries. As you can see, we have some logos up there. So, you know, financial services, uh, consumer product goods, uh, medical device companies. So I like it because every day is a little bit different. Like you're learning about different industries, you're learning about different processes. Um, and as Michael mentioned, we're using cloud technology to, to solve some of their business problems. So we use Anaplan in our practice. So I don't know if you know anything about Anaplan, probably not. So. Um, it's a very large company went public about a year ago, a year or ago. Um, and a lot of people describe it as Excel on steroids. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a lot better than Excel, but um, it also provides the visualizations as well. Um, so dashboarding and, and some graphs and things like that. Um, and you can also layer other technologies on top of it, like a Tableau or a BI, if you guys are familiar with that, um, to get some visualization. Um, but a lot of this, uh, you know, we're building and we're trying to also not only help improve pieces of their planning process, but also connect their planning process as well to make it a little bit more seamless. So, um, you know, a lot of companies have disconnected planning and we're trying to bring that all together so that, you know, it's a lot easier um, on the fp and teams and things like that. You guys want to add anything? Did I pretty much cover the EPS bubble? All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, um, I think you have, a, yeah, this can, uh, can I'm actually an Anna player. Yes, sorry. So, that. what's the onboarding process like as far as when, I guess, new business hires come in and maybe they don't have yes. the primary Anna plan? So, the training process to get those certification. Yeah, so if you asked us a couple of years ago, it would be figured out. But uh, <laughs> we've actually developed a very solid training program. So, we have um, an internal talent journey. So you start, start off as kind of a, they're, they're called model builders. You start off as like a junior model builder and you work your way up um, based on specific criteria um, all the way up to an architect where you're actually designing the solution. And you have a mentor along the way to make sure you're reaching these goals and, and understanding certain things. Um, and we also have, uh, if you go to the next slide, sorry. We also have a, an internal um, center of excellence as well. So, Every other Friday, every other Friday we meet um, as a as an internal team and we kind of go over best practices, um, things you're learning at the client site, um, standards that we want to put in place so that everyone's kind of doing things the same way. And it's really helped people come up to speed very quickly. Um, we also have internal case studies that we do to make sh in the tool to make sure people are building and get comfortable with the tool as well. 
anything else we do with training. I'd say the process is very robust. Yeah. You know? Like I would, the, the people that, the newer folks are probably saying like, stop training me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very good. Yeah, and um, we so the the master Anaplanner and, and the solution architect certification, those are uh, technology specific. So those are through Anaplan, but um, you have a mentor too to kind of help you take those tests and things like that. Um, in addition to our own internal center of excellence, we also enter, uh, offer a center of excellence kind of uh, program uh, set up in terms of our services as well. So we, uh, Pat's a master at this. Uh, he's at his current client. He's basically implemented a COE over there, helping them run things, making sure uh, everything goes smoothly. Uh, anything you want to add on that, Pat? Um, working with them right now. But yeah, just um, with, with this technology specifically, where Kim's mentions the connected nature of the whole system, so like supply chains connected to warehouses, medical device, um, it's important that you can kind of like federal location, dele kind of like delegate out, pack problems the correct way, like everything's coming into one spot, it gets dealt with. All the communication, maintenance, administration, you have kind of end users on the, all sort of kind of control from the DOE. And we have like advocates we call them power users who try to try to kind of bear our flag out the, <laughs> the field. Um, and so far, so good. Uh, it's coming along. We'll sort of play a part of that. Thank you. Yeah, so in the, um, the analytics and information management practice, which I'm part of, hey, you can go to the next slide. So, um, so the kind of three uh, three areas where it breaks down insight and analytics, modern data management, and platform services. So if you think of kind of um, bottom to top, the journey of data. So where does data sit? How does it get stored? How does it get moved around? How does it get secured? That's kind of platform services. So anything like Azure and AWS, Amazon Web Services, what are the platforms where, where data sits and moves? That's kind of platform services. The modern data management, or kind of how how does it get structured, and and um, how is value added to it? And how does it? What are the processes for moving the data, and for and for for getting it kind of analytic ready? That's that modern data management, and then up to the top, and then how how does it actually present it to to the business or to business users, to business analysts, to executives, to uh, to client, to you know clients of our clients, um, where that's the visualizations, dashboards, the uh, um, business intelligence, advanced analytics, kind of data science and things like that. Um, that's the kind of that insights and analytics. So it's kind of that whole whole data journey from uh, bottom to top of, you know, how do you get the data and, and you know, secure it and store it up through servicing it for that, uh, you know, for value. Um, and then a little bit about our aim structure. So uh, we have a Kind of those three areas break down into further disciplines um, and so we've organized within our practice around around some of those functional aspects and so we have um, we have kind of this governance aspect that's that kind of runs all we have I think we have about six or seven different kind of sub COEs down there so um, like I said there's a lot of technologies there's a lot of processes for for dealing with with data so we just want to make sure that we're organized and kind of um, start to, you know, specialize enough in that we have, you know, our consultants belong to one of one of these COEs and so we, we kind of organize and how do we how do we deliver in a best practice along some of these different um, different areas. So it's kind of general how uh, we're, we're organized internally. Oh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the next practice. Salesforce, but again, this is at the next team uses primarily. I think, as we talked about earlier, uh, we're on the EPS and John's on AIM. So, the other night I sat with someone that was on the next practice um, and chatted with them for a little while. But um, Pat and I actually, a little while it was a, almost last summer, went to the Salesforce convention. 
big, again, another cloud-based software. 100,000 people or something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's the convention. Very, yeah. very large. Um, you, can, you, know, you can Google it after. I think their ticker is like. But Salesforce actually acquired Tableau, which we talked about. I don't know if you've heard of Tableau. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of people use Tableau, especially for reporting. So Salesforce recently acquired them, and Salesforce kind of runs the gamut from building applications, kind of internal phone apps, or building websites, um, pulling it all together again, and being able to you know monetize that data. Um, go to the next slide. Um, this is kind of how the Salesforce team uh, does their implementations. So similar but slightly different. So I wanted to focus, you see in that top left corner um, or quadrant, there's the application development. So the team will actually build an app. Um, it's there like on the last slide, there's a lightning bolt. Uh, Salesforce calls it like their lightning, it's a lightning portal. And that's where these guys build an internal application. What they do with that application then is they can go do an implementation with the clients so or kind of moving around the clock. And then they go do a custom part. So with most people, the application we build internally isn't going to be able to fit um, naturally when you go drop it off at a client. So we'll sit there and take what we've been able to build and build a couple different types of apps internally, go sit there and make sure it's custom, and then also as they grow, adjusting the application and the software as they need. There's also the second part, which is the community. So the lightning aspect is the internal app. The community is a different part of Salesforce that links with it, but it's what the end users would see. So, for example, if you're at a finance firm and you're doing an HR implementation with Salesforce, the community, their end product, could just be like you entering your 401k info or signing up for your 401k stuff, all connected then back to that Lightning application. Um, so, kind of the same thing that's across things, the connected planning. Mm -hmm. This is just done in Salesforce. Um, you can see on the bottom uh, some of their partners, and you can kind of see there starts to be kind of this overlap between the applications. Because each one has, you know, back on that slide that had hundreds of applications, everything has what it can do maybe slightly better or a better fit for the client. So this is just another example that Salesforce is the primary tool for our next practice. Okay. You go to, you go, oh, yeah, perfect. Um, so, you know, now that you guys have an idea of our different practices, it's all like the technical, like, you know, work and things like that. But we do have other things that we do outside of our, our client engagements and the, and the technical pieces of it. So um, one example is, you know, recently I'm not staffed 100% on a client, so I've been, been being pulled into some sales pitches, um, whether it's, you know, doing workshops or presenting to prospective clients, um, answering any questions they may have. Um, I like it because it kind of switches up things up. Um, not every day is the same for me. So I could be doing client work or I could be doing kind of any of these things um, and beyond. Um, Michael, I know you're not fully staffed right now either. So do you want to talk about some of the things sure. you're doing um, as well? So I've had, like the last two weeks, I'm in between clients. I've had a little downtime. So uh, this event, as well as work recruiting at other schools I've got to partake in, been fun because it's not something I got to do the past two years when I was staffed for that full period. And then as I get staffed again, I won't be doing as much. Um, but recruiting, and another example would be training and mentoring. From some of the stuff Pat said, like we had a group of new hires come in, I got to sit with them, um, kind of basically be an architect for internal case studies where I kind of, you know, give them tasks to help them along, but still let them struggle so they, they can learn the application on their own. Um, and then we've also been building out an internal model to do forecasting that we want to use internally to then show the other practices. Quick question. Um, how long are your, your engagements? You just like said engagements. Engagements. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it varies. It varies um, widely. Yeah. Yeah, my yeah. next one's going to be somewhere around six to ten weeks. Cool. So okay. it's just, you know, and Pat actually was on the same line. We, were, we never worked together. And I worked with three big different teams. So it was basically like a six month implementation, a new team, six month implementation, and then another six month and in between, like helping out with you know, connectedness or some other stuff. But it it, it sounds long, it didn't feel long. Um, yeah. And uh, are they, um, um, since um, I guess you and you guys said that they mostly like it. Of these like regional or national yeah i think they're right now they're kind of all over um 
think we've been lucky enough that they're in the Northeast, but there's there's definitely some travel once in a while. Um, I don't know about the the AIM practice. Are you guys mostly? Yeah, so I think the idea is to try to keep it re somewhat regional, mm -hmm. but um, but it, but it's also a little bit opportunistic, and it and it also just because uh, you know we might have a client in a in a different state or different region or country even. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're traveling all the time because uh, different, e even large companies do a lot of remote work. So, um, so if you like travel, there are definitely clients that you, know, you travel every week or every couple weeks. Um, but there are most, of, you know, probably the the larger majority is around you know traveling for milestones or kicking off a project for you know for going to help user testing and close down a project or something like that. So we try to try to um, have the um, you know, try to find locally the projects or regionally, but um, but we don't you know turn other opportunities away if they're strategic opportunities. And I think another point of this slide too, in terms of the non-client work. So obviously we're a services firm, so our revenue comes from you know billable client work and and, and clients paying for our services. But we are a growing company, and and um, um, and. And obviously now that we're acquired by a larger company, there's a lot of growth targets for us. So with that is the, the need to kind of help with internal initiatives. And, mm -hmm. you know, that they mentioned before around, the, you know, the Anaplan training as an example. A couple of years ago, there wasn't much structure around that. So maybe, you know, while they're on client work or, or some time in between, there's a the need to help, you know, shore up some internal processes, you know, that, that might make sense. So, or, you know, mentoring, um, mentoring junior, more junior people or, you know, helping out in uh, in different areas. You know, so one thing I like about it is it's very entrepreneurial. And if you see something that you don't like or they don't think is working well, you can just raise your hand and, and try to help come up with suggestions or solutions. That's definitely um, a big part of how we've grown. I join our team. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I think we probably can just go around and say why we like working at Cervella, if that's good with you sure. guys. Um, I can start. I think uh, the collaborative environment, I think you've already mentioned it. I'm gonna... But uh, that's one of the things I like about it. Um, that middle picture actually is company as of last year, last October, um, where we did an off-site um, at Mohegan Sun and we you know, had fun at night, but during the day we, we did all these collaborative exercises and it's just, it's so interesting to get people from all the different practices together because we all can kind of feed off each other and someone's always there to help you um, if you have a question or, or need help. Um, I just think it's a great environment to kind of grow and learn. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, like I said, I've been at the company for nine years and I, but I did schooling for electrical engineering and I did some other jobs that I found I didn't, I did, uh, engineering for a little bit. I did sales for engineering where I sold test equipment to engineers and, and it just wasn't wasn't me and I found this kind of consulting and kind of clicked in terms of I like you know like systems and like um, you know helping helping client being client facing but also getting deep into problem solving. And then with this company in particular um, when it, when Cervello was formed uh, 10 years ago the founders you know I looked at knew them and looked at them and, and they're just a bunch of really bright people who didn't take themselves too seriously but worked extremely hard. So there's very little hierarchy, very little you know air of air arrogance that like you know it kind of feeds into the collaborative nature. But you know there's if there there's a if there's a problem let's you know try to just find a solution and not you know not deal with the politics. We deal enough with politics when we go to our clients, you know large clients <laughs> have enough <laughs> politics there. So so it, it's refreshing to just kind of get a, an atmosphere of just people who want to move move ball forward. I think, uh, well, we talked briefly about the work, how I, I like transitioning from finance to the consulting. Talk a little about that. Uh, some of the things I love that Cervello has are silly things like we do a board game night once a month. Um, I don't know if any of you guys like board games, but things from Dan to Uno to Monopoly, it's usually somewhere around 12 to 20 kids and we'll order dinner. Um, whoever wants, there's like never any pressure with the stuff. Uh, we'll play board games one night. Last, actually last week we did our second poker tournament night um, and then we have things like a basketball team and you can kind of imagine a bunch of consulting data analytics <laughs> guys not being the best on the court. Um, we had an absolute blessing. The first write-up was like, 
while the Cervello, I think we were Cervello stars lost by the most, the highest margin. Like they seem to have the most fun. We can't really figure it yeah, out. Yeah, we had like one or two guys who played in college and everyone else was just like. <laughs> and it was so fun. Like, we just had a good time. Uh, there's the hockey team. At one point we had a soccer team. Um, I think any, you know, Cervello does, and we kind of talked about it, Cervello does a great job of recognizing everybody has a personal life as well. So yeah, we might be traveling once a month um, maybe it happens to be twice a month if you're on a frequent um, traveling client, but you also get to work from home. They know, you know, things come up, and, and I think the company does a great job of accommodating that, plus uh, providing opportunities if something interests you and a couple other coworkers, you can go and try that out. Yeah, I, I would say pretty much said everything. I, I personally do the hockey team, I stink at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> got two points a game, something like that. But I would echo what John said. I think that's super important that the collaborative nature and that everyone's approachable, obviously within reason. But John's a senior director. In my old, you know, old role, I would never go talk to a senior director. Put my head down, tail, talk to him. <laughs> um, but it's just not like that here. I really enjoy that aspect of it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any other questions? Yeah, okay, what do you guys have? Any reactions, questions? Yeah. So um certain going back to the hiring process for um I know a lot of consulting firms everyone does behave in state type of social um what's the the cases, what are the kind of um, type of cases I guess? So case we, studies right you know, now? Sorry, the, the cases that I that I mentioned, sorry, the use case and thing yeah. and the case study, that's actually after you get hired. Ah, so you like go through yeah. yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean yeah. to. Oh, okay. that, <laughs> that question has come up yes. and, and that's like John kind of talked about that's not how you know hand you a, a use case back in twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that just hasn't been our mold or the fit. Um, so it's a lot more trying to figure out if you, you know, we do ask some analytical questions just to see, you know, try to see if you could be a fit there, but then also personality traits and if you're interactive and engaged. Yeah, I mean, a typical question could be like how, you know, how much, how many gallons of gas are used per year in the U.S., you know, so just to kind of see how you might think of like, okay, well, how many, you know, how many, how many drivers, uh, yeah, how, how many drivers are there, how many cars, how many, you know, what's the average trip? So just just certain questions like that, just to just to see how does your how does your mind process information, or how do you break down a problem? How do you um, what information do you think you might need? Things like that. Huh? Um, so the company that comes to you with the problem, I guess they um, their systems are not connecting well, not integrating. Is that sort of like? Um, is that, I guess I guess maybe I should put in a question. What kind of company, uh, what kind of situation would a company find themselves in that they would call Surveil? Um, there's it's varied. Um, I'll give a couple of examples. So one is you know we have three different practice areas. So um, depending on kind of the situation, might be routed to one or the, one of the three practices. Um, an example might be just um, you know a company is either being acquired or they're, they're di divesting a business and they have systems that either need to come together or, or move apart. So like maybe you need to migrate data or migrate systems across technologies, across infrastructure. That's maybe one flavor for like the aim practice. There's also, you know, we, we want to, um, we're implementing a new business process or selling a new product or a new offering. We want to put analytics on top of, is this working in the marketplace? So we want to be able to monitor and, and kind of work through that. Now there might be, um, you know, the, the planning process is just breaking under its own weight because it takes, you know, three months to come up with an annual budget every year, um, and and the and the, the client is growing and they're just they've had enough of it. Set up the teams based on the right project, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. 
I used to work with them, both of them on the same project, but the need has been dialed down. And it's interesting that it, I mean the the common denominator is data, um, but we don't we don't serve all use cases. So uh, so you know if we hear a problem, we, we ha might have to listen and listen intently, ask a bunch of questions, and then maybe it's just oh it's not a not an offering that we provide, and so we may recommend or just say you know sorry that doesn't quite apply at this time. So it's not it's not ever like cut and dry. You know you kind of have to dig in, and even if client is asking something, they sounds like that we might do it there might be you know once you get really into it oh first you're not ready for us yet you need to go fix another part of your processes before we can you can really take advantage of our services i love the the, the software or the applications you guys you guys do some of that mm -hmm. developing of the of the app and then like you also use like salesforce it's a tool that you guys use right it's not an actual uh it's not an actual software developer, is it? Or the maybe yeah, software guess, uh, developers working for you? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. 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 but, but we don't, we're not like, um, we're partnered with, so it, we'll get different tiers of partnership. So like with Anaplan, or whatever the highest tier is, but we partner with the technology so that they're able to, like the sales, we have specific sales force um, developers yeah. with different roles, but we're not, we don't like pay. There's no uh, like. There's no relationship besides a partner relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So we're partners with all the technologies. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys, um, when you're, there are a lot of pressure to to find billable work. I guess. Are you are you finding mouth or whatever? They're constantly coming. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, I, and you guys can jump in. But I think um, you know, we have a sales team, and then we also, but we probably do the large majority, I don't know if it's 70 or 80% based on follow-on work. Mm -hmm. So um, so we find a client do a good job. There's always more work there. Um, and honestly, in the past year, a couple of years, we've had more trouble making sure we're doing the right work because we're all been very busy and, want to make sure that you know the next you know the client that comes to us are they a strategic fit for us mm -hmm. so we might you know evaluate the client and maybe you know we've had, ha actually had to fire a couple of clients because you know maybe they're just um, um, you know not worth the, the time investment or something like that so it's it's um it's a lot around finding the right kind of strategic fit but we've been hiring kind of like crazy for the past couple of years um, so it's like there's a lot of there's a lot of work out there. Yeah. We just right. need to make sure we can optimize it. Yeah. And I'd also say it's word of mouth as well. So if we have a client, um, someone left from that client and goes to another client, they usually recommend us um, if they have data or things like that. Um, and also just developing the relationships with our our software partners. So um, lately, I've been trying to you know talk to some of our Anaplan reps to make sure that they're bringing us into the right deals and things like. That. Also developing relationships. Getting work through that as well. Uh, another question going back to the onboarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right there. Uh, with the chain prices that you guys have built out now, so how long that for new hires? The new hires, right? So, so they have just switched before, and like we joke around with our new hires, and we kind of said, like, when I it was like yeah, learn yeah. it, go on the client, and keep learning, and like do both worlds at once. Yeah. Now they've kind of reformed it, so you do one week about for their model builder level one. It's about like more like two to three days, full days. Level two takes about a week and a half to two weeks, and then after that they're rolling out a, a level three. But we take someone and put them through our internal case study, which takes about two weeks. So from start to finish, about a month. Um, and then, you know, you're still learning things and, and the idea is that, and what we've heard back from all the guys, and I'll let you respond, um, but if after they finish one, they think 
they know everything. And then they start the <laughs> next one, and they're like, they joke, like, you, then you beat us back down. And then, you know, I get done with one and two, and now I think I know everything. Then you get your case study, and I'm like, I guess. Like, sorry. A little easier and lighter, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 180 or something like that. Sort of industrial. And in, in transparency, I would say, you know, the ANA plan, like, training is, is very mature, but there are some areas of, like, the AIM practice where, you know, because there are so many technologies evolving, maybe it's, a, you know, not quite a, as structured, but, but there's, but I think the key is that there's always, you know, support and, and mentoring, and, you know, it's in our all collective interest to go out and for each of us to succeed, you know, if, we put you out on a client and, and you fail miserably, then it doesn't look good for anyone. So, you know, there's a lot of investment that we put in into our people. Oh, no, I was going to ask uh, Seth. A certification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Those, yeah. Actually, yeah, those. <laughs> yeah. And and um, you may have missed it earlier, but we we had a a, a slide. I'll just. Um, I'm sorry about that. No. No. That, no worries. Yeah. Yeah. I went at three o'clock today. But just so you know, so so there's kind of two sides of that. One is that we work with a lot of different technologies, and so we we don't always need to look for just experts. Um, we, like we talked about, yeah. wanting to know the aptitude of sure. of you know how your how your mind thinks, and do we think you'll be able to pick up something? Right. Um, with that being personality, maybe not not that formal, yeah. Yeah. not that formal, but definitely question like leading questions and kind sure. of understanding how, okay. how so your mind, yeah. yeah. Um, but like, um, you know, like this slide here, this bunch of technologies that we work with, the question was, do you need to be an expert in these answers? No, but if you are already an expert and you kind of tick off the personality and culture fit and soft skills, then that's definitely like up. So like, um, you know, Tableau, Power BI, um, Alteryx, um, you know, AWS, Azure, probably big ones. A Agile project management is definitely a, a big area, Salesforce. Um, and then programming languages or anything kind of showing, working with, with data. And, and Anaplan actually now offers uh, .edu. Okay. You can email them. Um, they have like a University Connect. They also offer internships, but they let you take, you can take through them level one and level two for free if you're a student. So that's, that's new. Um, they were on that out this year, but uh, that's another opportunity to sell sources a lot. And, and I think um, just, you know, the certifications and everything are probably more helpful to, to like, get an interview, um, like, to, you know, sort through resumes and all of that stuff. That's, yeah. But then once you're in the interview, it's, it's you know, how do you, um, you know, how do you, how do you kind of present yourself? I think that's a, a big part of 
part of it. Yeah. Um, I think like very stuff. Guys already have to and in position. You know, we have some little buffers for but um that like that skill set I think is hard work can get you pretty far. Knowing all these things out of the box. One last thing to add. I know you probably can see all of us can chat forever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was recently Sorry. with the yeah. Anna Plan University Connect um, folks, and what they said they like about it is, and John touched on it, we make huge investments in our employees to be able to learn and then be billable. But Opportunities like Anaplan and Salesforce that let you kind of see what the product's like before yeah. also gives you a chance to see if it's something you're even. Because you might look at it and be like, "Oh, I thought I was. I looked at it. This is not for me." Yeah. <laughs> that at least gives you a chance to kind of help your own career and maybe help you figure out what you want. Yeah, so we have people that cross practices or will leave one practice and go to another if they find out something else looks more interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds like Anaplan and Salesforce are there. Oh, no, that yeah. might, well, that might be on the meeting. It's just because you have three of us. Yeah, on the EPS practice <laughs> and on the next practice. So on the AIM, we probably do the bulk of these technologies. Um, Snowflake. Yes. Huge yeah. So on, so AIM's Snowflake, which is a which is a cloud data warehouse, AWS, Amazon Web Services, the Azure platform, but and then Tableau and Power BI. Those are probably the top mm -hmm. five right now. A question around the. Uh, I know a lot of consulting programs talk about how type of. Have what? Sorry? Up to out, like, up oh, out, yeah, yeah. The, the, the two years or three. No, it, it's not that. It's not that stringent. It's not. It's like when I. Before I joined, um, I was actually the predecessor to Cervello. Um, I had read about like management consulting mainly, like the you know Deloitte Boston Consulting Group and you know, McKinsey. I'm kind of around traditional consulting, management consulting, um, and this tech, technical consulting and, and Cervello specifically is is a little bit more free form. It's um it's more um, there's not policies around up route. I mean, we obviously you know we we want we need to be be able to perform and be able to to um, add value to to clients and our teams. Um, so that's probably more the focus than than kind of the you know the promotion path. It's like it, you know someone could be doing well as a consultant or a senior consultant could be comfortable and and then maybe that's their highest and best use. And so you know we don't want to just get you know get rid of that person because they're not going to be become a VP eventually or right. something. So. Mm -hmm. but, um, uh, who are interested? What's the next step? Yeah, you can probably email um, any one of us. Yeah, our um, cards are there. Yeah, our cards are there. And then we can put you in touch with um, with our HR recruiting. Yeah. yeah. And if you go on the website too, there should be a spot um, to see open positions. We usually have rolling analyst positions. But yeah, do definitely. Yeah, definitely reach out to us personally. It'll be, be quicker for you, I think. Uh, I noticed on the website though, so I noticed this work. Senior analyst, and I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming in today. Yeah, thank you yeah, so much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, any, any, any other questions? I want to be mindful you're all back. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, we told people that we weren't available, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely appreciated because uh, you know I'm I'm in a management mm -hmm. in this um, four block. It's a professional development course for veterans, or you know meeting with some of these box mm -hmm. consulting firms. I hadn't really you know um, we haven't met with and done a lot of exploring of like technical consulting. Thanks. 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 Um, so yeah, I, I one of the things that kind of 
pushes me away from like the consulting space is traveling all the time. Yeah, I have a family, right? So, you know, yeah. being away four days a week or whatever and on the road. Yeah. Uh, but so I, I, I was taking. Trying to strike the balance. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and, and like I think we talked about too. Some some people will be on client that travels a little more. Yeah, but they like and like we stressed that that was you know obviously that that might be where you have to go for a little while. But if you're like, look, this is a lot of traveling for me, they would work with you. To yeah, find the best accommodation. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I that yeah. I have I have three young kids, and you know. Well, it's definitely, you know, I would say it's, um, you know, it's it's probably more of a challenge than, than like maybe a regular nine to five, go to the same place every every kind of day kind of work. Um, there's also a lot of benefits. I mean, for me, you know, I'm never bored. I've been like I said, I've been at this at the same place for nine years, which is different, a lot different from how I started my career. So it's a, it's kind of a, like a new career every project almost. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of benefit there and. And yeah, the girl works very hard at trying to strike that balance. Yeah. And you know, if you're not on site as a client or traveling for a client, you can work from home too. So that's always good. Yeah. yeah. yeah the key is getting your stuff done. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you get the outcomes, then, you know, we're not, you know, we're not just set out procedures just to follow procedures. Right. right. I told my client today, I'm not coming in. <laughs> You're here so much of the rest of the time. Yeah, I guess I technically travel 100%, but it's like I go to Walmart. So it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not pretty good travel. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah. Could be bad, though. <laughs> yeah. Probably tag this thing. Competitors are in this thing.